Dava here again with another bike maintenance video. This one's going to cover puncture repairs. Before we get into the practicalities of that though, I thought we'd cover a little bit on the background of how tyres and inner tubes and rims all fit together. And with that background knowledge, that'll make the job a little bit easier. So the tyres, the rubber bit on the outside, the wheel itself, it's a metal structure. We've got the rim, which the tyre attaches to, and the spokes, which keep the rim in that round shape. We'll talk about a specific type of tyre, a clincher, which is the most common, and that clips into the rim using a hoop of metal on each side called a bead. So how does this clincher tyre work? We've got the rim here. The spokes go into the middle of the, the wheel and you've got these little bits sticking out which the bead of the tyre sits underneath. Here's the rest of the tyre. And it's the inner tube that goes inside of this that we put the air in and as we pump it up that air pressure pushes on the tyre and makes sure it attaches to the rim and doesn't come out. Okay, so we're gonna uh, fix puncture on the rear wheel. First of all though, we'll have to take the wheel off. We'll put it into the hardest gear because that's the smallest sprocket back. That makes it easier to put the wheel back on when we're finished. And we take the brakes off by moving this rubber boot out of the way Pushing the brake arms together and they unclip. Undo the quick release. Hold on to the wheel as you lift the bike up. Give a little wiggle round till you get to about here and flip the chain off. I put some gloves on so I don't get too oily. Put the wheel to one side and gently lower your bike down with the chain pointing up the way so you don't damage the gears. With the wheel off of our bike, now is the time to get some space, get our tools together. We're going to need um, tie levers and we're going to need a puncture repair kit. And of course, once we're done, we're going to need a pump. And I like to have a buy right on standby as well. So take the valve off, no, sorry, the dust cap off. Make sure any extra air that's still in the and the tube comes out. And that'll make getting the tire off a bit easier. I'm gonna start opposite the valve and start pushing the tire away from the rim to get the bead out of that little lip. And then you start to see we've got a gap now between the tire and the rim. If there's not enough of a gap to get a tie lever in there, just start again from the beginning. Opposite the valve, squishing the tire in your hands and pushing it in towards the middle of the rim. Cool. So here's my valve here. I'm going to put a tire lever on one side, clip it in. You notice they've got a hook on one end and like a little lip on the other one. The lip goes under the bead and then you lever it over and the hook hooks onto the spoke. Once you get to your third tire lever, when you lever it over, the middle one will fall out. And now it's loose enough, you can take that one out as well and use that first one to squidge around and get all of one side of the tire off and go back to where my valve is, get my fingers either side of it, pull it out of the hole and then pull the whole tire up and over and off the wheel like so. Then leave your wheel to one side, having the valve at the top and get the inner tube out of the tire Keep the tire the same way up, leave it next to your wheel, 
That way, when we do find a puncture, we'll know where to look on the tire to see where that damage has come from, to see what's caused it. Now you've got your inner tube out, you can have a look for where the puncture is. I'm going to pump it up, get some air in there. And then, this is why I've taken my gloves off, is you can feel around for what might have caused a puncture. You can also feel on your cheek and listen for the air coming out. So we found the hole now, it's right here. I'm gonna mark it with my biro. And then across. And a circle that's about the size of the patch I'm gonna use. Oh, let the last of that air out. And then I'm going to rough up the inner tube inside that circle. And that's going to help the rubber cement do its job by making a bigger surface area. So we just want a tiny amount of rubber cement. Just a little dome of it. Splodge it on. And then without squeezing the tube, I'm going to spread it out. And I'm going to go wider than my patch. So that I don't end up with any bits of inner tube without the cement on that the patch wants to stick to. So that's going to need to cure for a bit. It's going to go from that shiny surface to a matte color. So the valve room inner tube was underneath where it says inflate to, and I found the hole opposite the valve. So that's where I'm gonna look first for anything that might have caused a puncture. There we go, that's a nice obvious thing to find. It's a drawing pin, so you wanna pull that out but it might not have been the only thing that caused the puncture. So while you're there, have a look and see if there's anything else as well. If you don't have anything that's really obvious like that, you are gonna to wanna to check on the inside of the inner tube, but you don't wanna use your finger because it'll be sharp in there wherever it's caused the puncture. So I use a tire lever, or I might use some tissue paper that will end up catching on any sharp objects that are poking through. And once you've found what's caused the puncture, you want to push it back up and out of the tire. And you can use your tire lever to do that, or a screwdriver or something like that. My patch has got a silver side and a paper side. Peel them apart. And I'll hold on to the paper and not touch the patch. That makes sure I don't get any dirt and oil on the patch. And I line up the middle of the patch with the, where the hole is, so the middle of my cross. Push down in the middle, squeeze my way out. And then once it's stuck down enough, we should be able to peel the paper away without peeling off the patch. Just squish those edges again chalk that you get in your puncture repair kit is to cover up any of that excess rubber solution and that will stop your inner tube sticking to the inside of your tyre. With our puncture fixed it's time to put the, the wheel and the tyre back together again. First thing to do is to put a little bit of air in the inner tube Just so much that it has some shape to make it easy. 
I like to put it all back together again with the valve next to the writing that tells you how much air to put in the tire because that makes it easier to find when you're going to pump up the tire again. I'm just tucking the inner tube into the tire. There we go, so that's nice and snug in there. Now on some tires it might tell you which way round it should go, it have a direction and an arrow. Uh, this is going on the rear wheel, so it's going to want to come this way as the wheel is moving forward. I get the valve, wind up with the valve hole, put it in. I need to wiggle it around to get it to pop out. And I'm going to pull it down, make sure it stays in place. And then put one side of the tire on. And that will go on quite easily. You said. There we go, cool. So I've got one, one side of the tire on. Yep. Start opposite the valve, start putting the other side on. And with a little bit of air in the tire, in the inner tube rather, that should stop the inner tube getting caught between the tire and the rim. Now, as I get to the end here, this bit's gonna be quite hard to push in. Maybe I wanna take a little bit of air have that inner tube. I'm just going to come back to the beginning, squish my tyre so the beads out of the rim, push it all into the middle, work my hands around on both sides and then eventually that becomes a bit easier to push over. If it is quite tight you don't want to ping it because that might damage the valve or the inner tube. Push the valve in a little bit and gently ease it across. And then put it back together, get the valve putting it straight to the middle of the wheel and then you're ready to pump the tyre up again. Now that you've fixed your puncture, it's time to put the wheel back on the bike. Pick your bike up first, keep the back off the ground, get the side with the sprockets, Oops, on the same side as the chain. Make sure the chain is underneath there. Oops, you're trying to line up the top of the chain with that smaller sprocket. And then wiggle your wheel until, oops, it goes back in. Do the quick release back up. Make sure it's the right tightness so that you can close it with just one hand. And then put your brakes back on. To move that little boot out of the way, the cable goes in the gap and it clips in together. And give the pedals a spin to make sure the chain's on correctly and there's no rubbing. If you don't have quick release holding your wheels on, you're going to have nuts on either end of the axle. So you'll need a spanner, an adjustable one will do. To uh, tighten the, the wheel nuts, you're going to turn clockwise to loosen anti-clockwise. 